another day, another dollar. Another day, another dollar. Same thing, different day, whatever they call it. My truck just cut off. That that auto, auto, auto thing. I timed it one time. Most of the time, but it only give me like three minutes for it to cut off. Sometimes it might stay on five minutes. Sometimes it might stay on 10 minutes. Either way, it cuts, it cuts off on me. I just messed up my bass. I tried to turn down the volume, but I messed up the bass. I gotta fix that. I need my bass. Hey, I be jamming in here, man. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know. There's one truck over there in front of me. They almost finished that one. Look like they gotta put some bundles on the back. And that's it. Yeah, it's raining. How ironic. Last time I came here, it was raining too. <sighs> this is Troy, North Carolina. Troy, North Carolina. At Troy Lumber. It's pretty nice out here. I like the view. What y'all think? Police officer lives right over there. Hop back in here out of the rain real quick. Hey man, let me show y'all something, man. I've answered this question many times, but I'm gonna answer it again. I know I got a crack in my windshield. I'm headed to the terminal in the morning to get a service done on my truck. I'm gonna get that fixed. That's the mount for the GPS. It comes with it. Got a magnet holds it up there. Rand McNally TND80. That's what it is. Hey, works pretty good. Only issue I have, the cable that comes with it is right over here. This cable that comes with it, like when you first buy it, like it'll work for a good while. Like you plug this up to the back, you plug it up to the mount. But you see, I got another cable going in there now. The problem that happened is once you had this thing for a while, you gotta charge, you gotta charge the GPS by itself and the mount at the same time. Uh oh, hold on, got coming. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hey, I'll tell y'all about that GPS later. Time for me to make my money. I ain't got time to talk to y'all. I gotta make the money. They got some Migos here now. Last time I came with some white guys. I gotta back up to these poles. These two poles right here. How we gonna do it? I'm gonna bust a big U-turn. Bust a big U-turn. And line up and do a straight back. Ha ha, already there already. My trailer's already there. Back it up to the pole. That's, that's how the Migo talk. Back it up to the pole. Migo gang. Y'all know they call me the Black Migo. Black Migo gang. Make sure I don't hit that damn pole. All right, gang, time for me to get to work. Flatbed gang.
Y'all see it's raining out here. I got so muddy. I got mud all in my truck. Y'all see it's raining though. But I still got a tarp. You see it's all flat on top. So the smart thing to do would have been to throw the tarps up there and then strap it. But this place right here, they gotta check these tickets before you tarp it. Then you gotta tarp it up there in the front where they can see you tarp it. You know how y'all do. Supposed to be tarping, but don't tarp loads. You know how y'all do. I don't do that. I tarp everything. Even if it ain't gotta be tarp, I still tarp it. That's how I do. Let's get back up front real quick. Back to the front. Oh man, my trailer ain't pumped up yet. We almost there. I'm still in the red. Come on, man, pump up. Pump, pump, pump up the volume. Pump, pump, pump up the volume. Uh oh, we at 70 PSI right now. We at 70. We'll roll with that. We're just going down the hill. The safe operating temperature. All you guys, uh, you know, got to do your pre-trip inspection to get your license. It's between 110 to 120 PSI. Once you get about 120 PSI, you ever hear the trucks when they be driving down the road or sitting at the truck stop and the truck just say, pss, pss. I bet y'all, y'all know, y'all know what that is. Some of y'all may know, but some of you don't. When it gets up to 120 and it starts letting out air, that's what you call tractor protection valve. Make sure you don't get too much air in your system. So when you do your pre-trip inspection and you check out the tractor protection valve, you gotta tell the inspector, tractor protection valve, properly bolted and secured. No abrasion, bulges or cuts. Ain't that how we do it? <laughs> Properly mounted, secured, no abrasion, bulges, or cuts. Drill sergeant. Hey, when the last time y'all checked out y'all tractor protection valve on your pre-trip? Not y'all that's in school, but y'all that's uh, already trucking. When the last time y'all checked that thing? Cause you probably, I know y'all probably didn't check that, check that damn thing on the pre-trip. Woo! Let me get back up here across these scales. Hey man, the scales at this place, man, they're real trippy. They need to do something about it. Cause you ain't careful, you can fall off the edge. Yeah, they're real trippy. And when I get back up to the front, I gotta put my uh, safety glasses and my hard hat back on. Cause they, hey, they don't play. They don't play the radio up front kind of get away with it in the back. See, but when you go up here, you got to you gotta go across the scale, give them your tickets and your paperwork, then they're going to tell you to back in beside the scale house. And when you back in beside the scale house, that's where you got to talk the load at. And guess what? All this safety, all this safety procedures that they got here, they don't have a tarpon station. So what you got to do? Climb on top of the load. In the rain. But they want to, but they want to preach safety. How ironic! No tarpon station, no fire protection, no harness, none of that. None of those nets that you got to put on on the side of the uh, of the trailer when you get up there. So when you come here, you got to be real careful, not to, not to, not to fall or break your neck. 
I guess the only good thing about it, if you do fall, you're gonna be dirty as hell because there's a whole lot of mud down there. It's a lot of mud. Last time I was here, there was a driver beside me that uh was talking his load and he was walking around putting bungees on it. And he stepped in a damn a mud hole and went all the way up down there to his damn to his damn knee. I was like, damn buddy, you alright? <laughs> hey, he fell on the ground, all the bungees fell. Yeah, so he got dirty. His boots got he got water in his boots. I was like, man, I feel bad for you. Y'all see that's a lumber truck in front of me on that scale. He empty right now. Hey, but hey, I done pulled up behind these lumber trucks in some places. Man, I done seen them things way out about a hundred thousand. Oh yeah, that'd be pretty heavy. Y'all see that steep drop off right there? That's why I'm telling you, you gotta be careful coming across this scale. As long as you, as long as you get straight. Coming on it, you be good. But if you got your trailer hanging off, hey, it's a bad day for you. Let's see what I let's see what I'm away out at. I bet you I'm away out about seventy. I say seventy three thousand. Let's see, seventy three thousand. Y'all can't see it. Uh oh. Oh man. Guess what it say? Seventy three thousand two twenty. Hey, I know my truck, man. I know my truck. Let me take this paperwork up here. Hey, with me out the truck, it's seventy two ninety. This guy beside me, he must have been overweight. Like he getting reworked. All right, buddy, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you, buddy. All right, he told me to go ahead. Y'all do know, forklifts, forklifts always have the right of way. Yep, forklifts always had the right of way. I wish y'all could see that. Hey, that truck that just passed by me just now, they got a Confederate flag bump, uh, on their bumper. I was already in the hole. 
but I had to give the guy to my right. I had to give him a little bit of space because he's talking his load. There's the safety guy right there. That's the one that'll get you. You don't got your safety glasses and your hard hat on. Like, he don't play. All right, gang. <sighs> I can't show you my tarpon, but I'm about to get out and tarpon. Hey, right, pretty solid tarp drive. What y'all think? What y'all think? Pretty solid? Pretty solid. We're about to hit the road. I'm gonna make my next stop at a Love's. Do a load check, get some fuel, get something to eat. Time to roll, people. Time to roll. Hey man, shout out to PNS driver. Just hollered at me, man. I was making, I was in the process of making a video when you walked over here. I, I didn't get your name. Sorry about that, man. Hey, leave it down in the comments so I can make sure I, I got the right person. But yeah, I ain't forget about you, man. I ain't forget about you at all. I'm about to head on out 256 miles before I get to uh, Madison. Four hour, 56 minute drive. My GPS wants me to leave out of here and make a right. And I've I been, last time I was here, I, I remember going that way. But uh, coming up here, this is my second time coming up here. And you pass, you pass by the interstate when you're coming up. And like I literally saw it. So okay, my okay, we're about to figure this out. If Google Maps takes me back towards the town to get on the interstate, that's the way I'ma go. Cause I've been the way that the truck route is taking me. But it takes you about about thirty miles. I wanna say it takes you about thirty miles uh to get get right back to the same interstate, but you gotta go through the country. I don't mind riding in the country, but if I can get on the interstate within five miles of leaving here, that'd be even better. So I'm about to grab me a couple bottles of water out the back and put up here with me. We're going to head out. Grab me a couple bottles of water. I always keep at least two bottles of water up here. One to sip on, finish that one. I sip on the other one. Yep, yeah, we about to get on up out of here. This guy beside me, that's ain't how the tarp he is. Yeah, I got a tarp mine, and I got loaded in the rain, so it's already wet. I got ready when I got ready to actually talk, it wasn't raining, but they loaded it in the rain. So if it's wet, it ain't my fault. It ain't my fault. Did I do that? It ain't my fault. I hope I don't get no copyright strike for using those lyrics. I'm just sitting here getting situated. About to put my seatbelt on. Cut my Google Maps all real quick. Hey, what I was telling y'all about that GPS earlier, before I had to pull up and get loaded. You gotta charge the, the I figured out, and I figured it out by watching a YouTube video on another guy. But you gotta charge the 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 GPS booster in the back, because that's what it's called. You gotta charge that. And also charge the um, the tablet itself. That's how I keep my charge. Cause if you cause when I first got it, you didn't have to do it like that. But now since I had it for a while, and how I found out, it actually sucked. Because I was in New York City when it happened. 
you know, New York City, you got to be real careful. So I was in New York City, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, my damn GPS just went black. I was like, what in the world? So I had to pull over. I had to pull over, man. Get that thing right. Okay, I guess I guess the truck route is correct. Because the Google Google Maps is telling me to take the right as well. Guess I'll take the country road. I would rather go back to the left. Because if you go back to the left, you can get on the uh that's that's the way I came in. But you go back to the left and you can get on the interstate within like five miles. That's what I would rather do. I follow the truck routes and the Google Maps route. Yeah, eight, it's 18 miles to get back on 73. 18 miles. Ain't too bad. It probably ain't, it probably ain't too much difference. Like this is 18 miles. If I would have made the lift, went back through the town and got back on the interstate, it might have been like 22 miles. Can't be much different. You never know with the traffic. Might have traffic patterns up there or something slowing it down. One thing I like about going to Madison, Madison Wood Preserves. 216 Oak Park Road, Madison, Virginia. I think that's the right address. I know it's Oak Park Road. I don't know if I got the numbers right. But one thing I like about going there, you can park overnight. And when you get there, like when I get there tonight, I'm going to go ahead and take all the bungees off the tarps. Take all the bungees off. Unloosen up the straps. Because you got to nose in to get unloaded. So you just nose into the little parking area. I'm gonna leave the tarps up there, cause you know, they gotta see that it's tarp. So you just take all the bungees off, take out, unloosen all the straps. It sucks cause the, the straps are under the tarps. So it's kinda hard to pull them out while you still got tarps on. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do all that tonight. And then, about Madison, about five o'clock in the morning, about 4.30, 5 o'clock, you'll hear somebody knocking on your door. And it's the guy that uh that, that checks you in. So they unload you about five o'clock. So you just get unloaded, lay back down, lay back down, go back to sleep, get you a nap. Then they'll, they'll knock back on the door again and tell you to back out. And you, then you gotta park in, in another parking area. And uh you just wait right there until until you know your company opens. But, you know. You you may be you may be empty at five six a.m. in the morning, so you just gonna you just gotta and, and good thing about it you ain't start your clock, so you know you just creep out, go to the parking area, and wait wait to get a load. But in my case, when I get empty in the morning, I'm just gonna dead head straight to the terminal in Emporia, cause I gotta get a service done on my truck. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just get up in the morning, dead head to Emporia. So I should be at, I should be at Emporia by no later than no later than nine o'clock. I should be at in Emporia because I don't know how long this service is going to take. Plus, I got to get a new windshield on the right side. So I go ahead and get that out of the way. Hey man, let me tell y'all something, man. My birthday is coming up February first. Super Bowl weekend. My birthday is on a Saturday. Super Bowl Sunday. My birthday is February first. I never asked y'all for nothing, and I'm still not going to ask you. Still not going to ask y'all. You know, some YouTubes, some YouTubers will always want money from their people. Hey, I'm not going to ask y'all for nothing. But I, I'm just going to tell y'all, I will be accepting gifts. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, but make sure y'all tell me happy birthday, February 1st. I'm pretty sure I'm going to post a picture or something. Let y'all know. Y'all want to know how old I'm going to be? Turn to 24. I'll be, no, I'm lying. I'll be 34. I hope I hope I'm seeing Minnesota and Kansas City in the Super Bowl. That's what I'm hoping. 
Yeah, but I don't know. My buddy Chris, he said he's going for Green Bay. I'm going for Minnesota. It's time for Kirk Cousins to have his little shine, man. I like Kirk Cousins. That dude is a gunslinger. Hey, no, we ain't got no more Monday night games. He like 0-9 on Monday night. Hey, we ain't got no more Monday night games. I knew that was going to beat New Orleans. Everybody talk about the refs getting involved. Okay, the refs got involved last year. New Orleans lost. Same thing about New Orleans. They got too many. They got too many eyes on the team. They got too many individual players. You know, Drew Brees chasing his own records. I ain't, so I ain't saying it's his fault they lost because you know the defense. He don't play defense. But, you know, he chasing all the records, but he only got one Super Bowl. It is what it is. I'm not a New Orleans fan because they play in the same division as my team, the Carolina Panthers, who will be coming back strong next year. In case y'all didn't know. Flatbed gang! Say it with me one time. Say it with me. Flatbed gang! Alright gang, we out of here. I'll see y'all on the next one.